Hello there, welcome to Five Figures. Once again, we're looking at some big boys. Stuff that doesn't fit in the photo booth. So while I have the table set up for the dinosaurs, uh, I thought I'd go ahead and do my Titans as well. So these are your Transformers. These are Titan class. Um, I'd say most of these are Headmasters. Well, at least two of them are Headmasters. Uh, the rest I think are Titans Returns. But uh, I guess I'll just start off with uh, what's what's gotta be my favorite, which is Omega Supreme. Now, I'm not gonna transform these guys. It would take me hours to transform all of these. Probably take me about a half an hour to an hour to transform one of them. I'm not very fast at it. There's a lot that goes on, and then these guys have a lot going on. But as far as just your standard as an action figure, which, you know, the character is what I always look for, not so much the city or the complex or the structure. Um, this guy transforms into a rocket base with a train track that circles around it. I always thought this was the coolest thing. He is quite poseable and pretty well balanced for something of his size. He's got nice head articulation. You get pretty good movements out of the arms. Everything is ratcheted, as you can hear it all the time. And they are firm ratchets because you're dealing with a lot of weight. These boys are heavy. I can't, I don't know if the camera's shaking every time he steps down, but they're heavy boys. Anyway, believe it or not, Omega Supreme is the smallest, I believe. I don't think he's the lightest. Um, he is quite heavy. He's got a waist articulation. He's got nice hip joints to kick forward and bend out quite well. And he's got a pretty decent knee joints. Joints at the elbow, and since he doesn't really have hands, but like a gun thing and a claw, uh, they work pretty well. He's got lots, lots, lots of moving compartments and stuff that opens and alters and hidden weapons and just there's a reason why he's called Omega Supreme. He's, he's Supreme. Anyway, uh, by far my favorite of all of them. Um, and as you can see, I've left a Power Ranger in here, a six inch uh, lightning collection scale to give you an idea of the size of what we're dealing with. So these guys are very, very large. Um, this is the Ark, probably the second biggest in, in size. He's probably not the heaviest. He's skinny in some places and very bulky in others. So he's kind of a combo. I think he's probably one of the lighter ones because most of him is um, kind of a shell. As you can see, he just transforms into the Ark, the ship that they flew down here to Earth in, uh, which is pretty cool in and of itself because as the Ark, he is a massive ship. Just, I mean, I don't think he's not quite Millennium Falcon sized, um, but uh, maybe Power of the Force Millennium Falcon, he's getting pretty close. Not, not, not too much. He also came with a, uh, the Teletram one, the computer also transforms. Uh, that came with him, but it's not, I think I have it on display in another room. I totally forgot that it went with this. Uh, but it's not really, it's like an, a figure accessory to this figure. It's not, uh, not the figure itself. As far as the aesthetic, uh, this guy is really cool. And they're, he's a brighter color than a lot of them, which I know kind of sounds hokey, but it's nice to have something yellow on the shelf. Uh, Transformers tend to stick with darker tones. You get blue and whites, a lot of purple. And of course, everyone's favorite lime green over there. You'll see that in quite a few uh, Transformers. So he's got a good waist articulation, but I'm, I'm telling you, these things ratchet hard. And that's so they can hold whatever pose you decide to put them in because even the lightest guy, this guy, there is a substantial amount of weight and balance. I don't, I feel like a weird chiropractor, but uh, you get the idea. These guys 
ratchet hard and click hard, but it's because you can put, a, I don't know, this guy's probably six or seven pounds and you can still pose it. So that's pretty cool. I appreciate that they put that much torque into the ratchet part of it. I'm gonna move him over here. Uh, I think I'm gonna reach over here and grab Scorponok. Scorponok is a fairly recent addition. Um, I gotta tell you, I when I saw him come out, I barely remembered him. I he was late in season three or four, and I just I forgot all about him. When I think of well, somebody's going by really fast. Uh, but when I think of giant green transformers, I always think of uh, uh, Devastator, obviously. Uh, not so much this guy. Now this guy does classify as larger by quite some degree than Devastator. Devastator is actually not terribly large. Um, not compared to the Titans and the transforming cities and the transforming bases and stuff like that. Um, that said, <clears throat> Whereas like the Ark has a more maybe modern feel to it. Uh, same way with uh, this new uh, Metroplex. He doesn't look quite as old and even new Metroplex, old Metroplex, I, I, he has a different look. This looks so vintage 80s Transformers. He's got the pur purple and green aesthetic the red visor sunglasses. I mean, I this guy looks totally great. He's got some of the same articulation. It's doing very well. He does have giant claw hands. I have a lot of problems though with like his shielding pops off. He also has like a big drawbridge that clips to his back and is supposed to stay in place. But I found that it really doesn't. Um, and on top of the claws, which turn in quite a bit, so you can get quite a bit of range of movement out of it. Uh, whenever I display him, I always stick uh, smaller figures in his claws because it looks awesome to have him hold them. He's just pretty, pretty massively cool. And if I remember right, his head, he is a headmaster, so his head will pop off and transform into another figure, uh, a feature which I don't really you know, use. I don't think I ever will. And of course, there's why he's called Scorpionok because he is a he transforms into a giant scorpion and also a city. But we'll pop these back in. Pop those back in. Put that back up. Yeah, don't get me started on transforming these guys. We'll be here today. Anyway, Scorponok. Uh, pretty awesome. Now, they also made, which is basically the same mold as this, except they gave him a spear, and they changed the head sculpt. Uh, and he's black and red and gold. And they made a black Zarak. That would be, well, I think he had only appeared in, like, the comics or later television shows. I was completely unfamiliar with Black Serac, and I was hazy on Scorponok um, in this form. So um, I did at one time have Black Serac on pre-order, and the company I or tried to order him from just took forever, and I got into a pinch, and I just said, hey, you know what, refund me my money. I'm, I, I don't need it, and I'll just stick with this. I don't need the uh, Black Serac version, version of it. Um, and I don't regret that decision. Uh, these guys do take up a lot of space and I have a whole lot less space to deal with than I used to. <clears throat> so I will put him over there. Um, next we will move over to this new Metroplex. So I heard a lot of people when this came out, a lot of people were bitching about this Metroplex. Uh, why don't they just re-release the original Metroplex? Why, why make this one? And I get it. Y you know, you want to keep, you want the original. You don't want this, this kind of new guy. <clears throat> the new, the old Metroplex is running like, I think the cheapest I've seen is maybe $500. Uh, he's a pricey guy. 
And this I was able to pre-order for, I think, and get ordered for 150, which is a lot for a toy, but for a toy of this size, it didn't seem that bad. And I know a lot of people complain that he's too skinny and he's got this big weird dirt um, tool thing that straps to his back. I don't really care. None of that bothers me. I'm trying to remember how this comes off though. So out of all of them, he has a waist rotation. He also has an ab crunch. Now the ab crunch, if you know my videos, is one of my favorite joints on a figure. It gives you a different type of movement and range and expression that you can't get without it. So I was pleased that he has that. His legs are very long and the knee are set very high. It's kind of awkward. But when you pose him, it doesn't really stand out that way. It doesn't look that bad. And he has very large feet, which helps balance because when you set him up with his, whatever you call this thing, his big tool, which he carries, it really throws the balance off and it really wants to tilt. So you have to hold it close to the body and then maybe tilt the figure back slightly. This thing is very heavy on the end and really just kind of throws a lot off. I don't remember how I had this. These guys, once you, uh, once I get them, they, they get transformed maybe once and they sit on my shelf and just look really awesome. I don't really remember how that goes on. I will deal with it later, but. As far as one of the newest ones to come out, this guy is definitely the newest that I've got. Like I said, I think Black Sack is um, newer, but not one that I I hunted down all the way. So we stand you back over here by my weird farm painting that I made. And we're gonna end by looking at what's the largest, by far the largest. Fortress Maximus, and this is also the one I've had the longest, the oldest. Um, I think I bought this right before I moved to New Mexico, um, which was kind of my own going away present thing. And um, I love it. It's, it's just the biggest. It is by far the biggest. Um, there's nothing super, super awkward about it. Some days you get like some random shapes and designs. Fort Max here, other than these flaps on the back, he's a pretty straightforward figure. And he's probably a little dusty because he's been on the shelf the longest. He's also a headmaster, so his head transforms into somebody else. He's also freaking heavy. I think the only thing I have that weighs more than him is Trichicon. It will appear, but it'll be in a video later. But Fort Max is pretty much the gold standard um, for a lot of these, and goodness, he's heavy. He's just a big, heavy guy. He's got pretty much the same things going on as everybody else, except he has individually articulated fingers, which is one of the things I thought was really cool. Uh, just the figure, just the finger, not the whole, like every joint moves though. Uh, he doesn't make the best fist which sometimes that would be cool. I wish he could have made like a better fist. But other than that, I can't really complain about anything on it. Um, he, like I said, has the oldest. He's been clicked a few more times and is maybe a little looser than some of the newer ones, but still a beast to try and transform and turn. But he still holds his articulation and his poses quite well. Um, um, I bought him new. Actually, I bought all these guys new. None of these guys uh, every now and then, I, I'm kind of iffy on buying used Transformers. They got to be pretty pretty cheap before I would do that. Just I, just the missing parts and everything. And I do have the stickers for him, but I've never put them on because I just haven't. I, I don't do the stickers. I just have them in a file. But that is him. And like I said, 
He's the oldest. <clears throat> Not my favorite, but awesome. You are definitely my favorite, sir. And the Ark, which I think, I think the Ark was probably the cheapest one I got. I think he was like 120. Uh, I guess not a lot of people were into the Ark, but still, they're all cool. Now, as far as should, would I recommend buying one? Do you want to pick one up? Uh, I would pick, if you're just going to get one, pick the one you like, of course, the most. Um, but my favorite and most classic of all the designs was, uh, Omega Supreme, I felt like he was probably featured the most prominent out of all of them. So he's the one I like to have in my lineup. If I'm doing a display of Transformers or I'm looking at my Transformers, uh, he's one that usually finds his way there just because that was the coolest one. He had as many options as, as everything. So um, I don't know what he's running these days. I think the last I looked, he was about 270. I didn't pay near that much, nor do I want to. So that's part of the reason why he got kept. Uh, I know that if I had sold him, he would not be replaceable uh, for, in my budget. Fortress Maximus would not be replaceable in my budget. So, you know, you got to think about this when you buy some of these things. You can never get them back. Some of them you can, some of them you can't. And that is ultimately why I ended up holding on to Omega Supreme. And uh, actually, I've, I've ended up holding on to all of my Titans. So... That's what it is, and that's my story. Uh, if you guys have a favorite Titan, let me know what you let me know what it is, and let me know what you think. And I thank you guys so much for watching. That's my story. Catch you guys later.